You all saw the teaser last time, but in case you haven't, well, here it is. Unfortunately, guys, I can't exactly do a stream for today because uh, I am a little preoccupied with uh, this. Yep, I was in Japan, Tokyo specifically, and I'm gonna talk about the whole trip. This video and this entire journey was brought to you by my wonderful patrons and donators. If you'd like to support my work, you can do so by checking the links down below. Also, huge thanks to our new patrons, Terra Lord and Below D. You guys are fantastic. For a lot of weebs around the world, there's no place that they would go to other than Japan. It's the land where all the good stuff is coming from these days. When the western media disappoints, and believe me, they often do, people seek for alternatives on entertainment. And they found the Japanese entertainment media, which consists of video games, animes, and most importantly, their over 18 plus materials. I too enjoyed the Japanese entertainment media, but unfortunately, there was one thing that almost managed to stop this entire thing from happening, and you can pretty much figure that one out once you see the news for the past couple of weeks. This behind me is Shibuya Station in the middle of Tokyo and normally on a Saturday afternoon, this place would be jammed with tourists, jammed with shoppers. Yup, it's the typhoon. Tons of planes are either delayed or cancelled, and our trip was on the verge of being cancelled. But thankfully, our tour guide there said that the situation was at least fine on the Tokyo side when we arrived there. And with that comes our preparation. Now, for our international journey here, there are a couple of essentials that you really need to take notes from, aside from the obvious spare clothes, your passport, and your ticket. First off, internet is pretty much essential to our lives at this point, and you really can't live without it. So if you want to travel internationally without worrying too much about internet, they already provided rentals for pocket Wi-Fi's that you have to return later when you come back to the airport, and you can select unlimited data if you're a power user like me. But if you're not traveling alone or if you don't split up that often, you need to remember to activate a roaming package for whatever phone service providers you use. Not activating a roaming package would seriously drain your phone bills if you activate the data. And you do need roaming in case you split up and your partner was the one carrying the pocket Wi-Fi. Only use roaming for emergency communication and some light browsing. Never use it for YouTube. They're going to drain the data a lot. And of course, since you're traveling abroad, every country will have different socket types. Try to search around the web of the kind of socket types that you use for your electronic device and the kinds of sockets that are used by the countries you travel to. Luckily, when I travel to Netherlands, the socket type there and in Indonesia are pretty much compatible. Not so much in Japan though, which is why you really need to get yourself a couple of international plug adapters like this. These ones are dirt cheap and I probably would recommend something a little bit more expensive, but at least these ones do the job well. Also, I did bring a power strip as well and that one really makes things more convenient. So those are the essentials for the electronic and internet use. At this point, it's pretty much up to you on the kinds of electronic device you want to bring. Of course, I bring in my laptop, which is brand new by the way. This is my Acer Nitro 7 laptop equipped with a 6-core i7 9750H and a GTX 1660 Ti. To say that this machine is overkill for 1080p gaming and video editing is an understatement. I also brought in my Sony CX405 camcorder that I use as a primary recorder. I can use my Note 9 as well, both as a video recorder and an audio recorder. My sister also has her own Canon EOS M3 camera to take pictures and record videos around. And I also did bring my Samsung QTU in case I need to record a video in there. I also brought my Nintendo Switch for for some enjoyment on the plane, and a couple of power banks. One 20,000 milliamp hour power bank for the general use, and one exclusively for the Switch. And now, I'm ready for the travel. Might be an overkill setup for a lot of you guys, but trust me, it's not as bad as the YouTubers who brought an entire mini ITX PC and a couple of monitors for travel. This laptop does the job very well, thank you very much. Regardless of modern nature's unforeseen circumstances, we're finally getting ourselves together in this beautiful land. And what do we get?
man, this place is raining. It doesn't rain that often throughout the journey, but the moment we arrive, the rain was enough to get ourselves wet. Now, I go to Japan specifically on the Tokyo region and nothing else, which is a shame because I do want to visit many other places around Japan. And my first impression on Tokyo was that it's a place where you really can get yourself lost into, especially on the underground tunnels. The underground tunnels are some of the most sophisticated and complicating tunnels that I've ever been through. Without all the guides and the pointers and all of that, you would probably get lost easily on your very first couple of appearances in there. I'm sure that as you get on with time, you'll get used to it, but man, this feels like a maze, especially figuring out which train line would get to your destinations. Through the small but not so impactful rain, there are a couple of interesting things that I found around this region, one of which was an arcade game center. Me and my brother are very huge fans of Tekken, so we're hoping that we might be able to encounter a Tekken arcade machine there. After all, I couldn't find any of them back in my home country, so we went into one of them and, what do you know, we found a couple. We had a lot of enjoyment playing the game, and then this happened. It seems that juggling an old man using an annoying shrieking schoolgirl is way too much for this machine to handle. Playing in the arcade cabinet is where I realized that I've never actually played a fighting game with a proper arcade joystick before. The first time I played on this cabinet, I forgot my main character Xiaoyu's juggle combo, although that's mostly because I haven't played Tekken in a while. But after getting used to with the mechanics and the controls and all of that, I managed to overcome that barrier and somehow beat Devil Kazumi in one small arcade session. I do feel that the CPU went in a bit too easy on me, but anyway, that was fun. So after that day, we got ourselves to a nearby cozy hotel, let my brother to recover from the losses that he had on the arcade cabinet by playing Tekken on my PC, and that's where we eat some dinner and rest for the day. <laughs> This is one of the very few sources of all the geek stuff. The anime, the video game, the merch, etc. It's pretty much complete throughout the entire thing. And as I expected, the PlayStation and the Switch games truly dominate the sphere. Even PC gaming has its place too. As for Xbox, well, it has a place. There are quite a lot of things that surprised me throughout the time I was there. I found all of the physical copies of the game that was in my uncapped reviews, including one that will be coming, like Code Vein. I just don't really have too much time playing it due to these circumstances. I also found Persona 5 Royale in there, but for what it looks like, it's a pre-ordered digital copy because the game's not out at the time. As for merch, I did see a lot of them related to popular franchises like Persona, Dragon Quest, Fire Emblem, Dark Souls, etc. I got myself two keychains of female bailiff because bailiff is bay. My brother got himself a Zelda Sheikah tablet bag. Unfortunately, while he did get to see some JoJo related merch with him being a JoJo fan and all, he couldn't get one that isn't cheap. He should have planned beforehand in which region he can find the merch. After this journey in Weeb Center, we moved on to another place. This, my friend, is the Shibuya district where a lot of the most iconic anime scenes happen. I actually found a hiding spot for the Phantom Thieves and I also find the exact same spot in Shibuya where the Persona 5 protagonist did all the stuff with the politician. And of course, right next to it is the famous Hachiko statue, the goodest of all the good boys. Throughout Shibuya, we stumbled upon some shopping centers, which also have some really cool merch. My brother got to take pictures with the PUBG's iconic welding helmet. I myself got the Mario, Luigi, and Wario hats with a really cool mad scientist glasses that fit the cosplay very well. That's my OC, do not steal. This is also the day where I get to Toyo University 
a university that was actually the one that Reiji attended from Our World Is Ended. My mother has an acquaintance in there and we decided to pay a little visit. That's where I also tried to do the Joker dance and strolling around in front of the university. Shame that I didn't get the recording of the front area, but I did get a picture of it compared to Our World Is Ended CG. And that's all for day two. We decided to visit Asakusa, where the temple is, and pray to the gods there to hope for good fortune. Despite being a bit cloudy, it's still a very beautiful place filled with so much antiquities. We did some really interesting activities in there too, such as raffling for our future fates. I myself got a bad fortune, which is why I have to tie it up. That day was also the time where we visited Harajuku, a place sprawling with shopping centers. Unfortunately, I didn't get to explore that area that much, as I split up with my family at that time, and I mostly stayed staying on the nearby McDonald's. My sister did get a couple of footage in the anime merch stores around the area. We also visited Tokyo's Disneyland, but we didn't get to enter it because we're not spending too much money. We did, however, get a couple of nice pictures, and my OC is just wandering around there, being annoying. <laughs> Unfortunately, every journey will come to an end, and this is that end of the journey. This is a marvelous journey. I get to visit iconic places around Tokyo, I get to enjoy their beautiful environment even if it's a very cloudy and cold day in there. All around, it's a fantastic journey that really gives an insight to the world around me. Before I close this video off, I do want to let you all know once again that I wouldn't have gone into this point without you guys. I'm not really the one who brought myself into this position, it's you people who support supported me throughout this YouTube journey. You really are the best fans I've ever had. Even though I don't have as many as the big YouTubers out there, the love that I'm getting is just as strong. And the best that I can do at this moment is just to continue providing you all with the best content that I can give you. Which isn't much, but I'm gonna do my best. So once again, thank you all for sticking with me all the way up to this point. I'll see you again on the next video.